The Seattle Seahawks return home to CenturyLink Field for the 2017 home opener this Sunday when they host divisional foe the San Francisco 49ers. Both teams are coming off disappointing losses and looking to right the ship and history seems to be in favor of the Seahawks as San Francisco has not won in Seattle since 2011. We're looking forward to be uh, at home and playing here at Century Link. It's a big deal for us to get this home season started. Uh, obviously, a little anxious about last week not getting rolling the way we wanted to. We feel very fortunate that we get get home and, and uh, get to work and, and bring it to the 12s and see how they're how they're ready for the opener as well. The Niners have a new quarterback at the helm this season in veteran journeyman Brian Hoyer, who threw for 193 yards and an interception in the team's loss to the Carolina Panthers. He does a great job at you know, controlling the game. He can throw the ball, that's for sure. You know, I was watching the film earlier and was like, oh, he got an arm on him. He's great at making the adjustments that he needs to make. He's great at, like I said, throwing the deep ball and, and making the right checks. It's, But I know one thing for sure, 32 out of 32 quarterbacks hate getting hit. <laughs> so if we can get after him, that'll rattle him a little bit. I think that they're going to try to get the ball out of his hands pretty fast. They're going to do a lot of, you know, intermediate shots. They're going to, you know, they're going to have some shots down the field. But I think it's just going to test us being able to recognize the routes and, you know, rallying to everything that's in front of us and try to minimize all the yards after catches and things of that nature. So we just got to be real disciplined in this game. In the Pete Carroll era, there have only been a small handful of opposing players to run for over 100 yards in Seattle. Running back Carlos Hyde is one of them. In the Niners' last visit to CenturyLink, Hyde rushed for 103 yards and two touchdowns. He's going to be the bell cow for them. So they're a team that wants to establish the run. They want to rely on the run. They want to you know, press the edges and attack the perimeter of our defense. And so he's a, he's a guy who's, who's more than capable. So he's a gifted back. Um, again, we have history against him. So we know he's a strong, solid back, nice cut back runner, hard nose, and get, uh, get behind his pads and try to run people over. I think just bringing him down, gang tackling him, is, is a big part of being able to bring him down. You know, when he gets one on one with DBs and different things like that, he tries to, you know, in a sense, punish him or whatnot. But if everybody's corralling him, everybody's getting on top of him, I think that's the best way of slowing him down. For the Seahawks, they're looking to correct the struggles on the offensive line and in turn establish the run game. This is a system that you want to be able to run the ball enough to set up your movements, your play actions, your shot plays, all that. And when you don't do that, you're really out of whack in all phases, you know, offensively. So I think all three of the runners bring something that's pretty cool to the table and not worried so much about that, just more about the consistency of blocking it right. They'll make the rest happen. The run game is just is so important, just so that, you know what I'm saying, gives Russ time back there to throw the ball. You know, you got to have a two-headed monster, you know, a running back and, you know, receivers out there on the wide, out wide. So, you know, it's very important for us to get it going. This will be Hoyer's first visit as a starting quarterback to Century and Link Field, an experience the 49ers coaching staff is trying to prepare him for, while the Seahawks coaches are hoping to take advantage of it. It's as loud as it gets there, so it's something you got to be ready for. Most of our guys, well, not most, but a lot of our guys have been there before, um, so they know what to expect. And um, the guys that haven't been there before, you just you want to make sure they don't get shocked. They they need to understand how loud it's going to be, and um, you got to understand going into it that you're not going to be able to hear. And once you know that and you're not surprised by it, then then you have to embrace it because it is a challenge. Our fans do a tremendous job of energizing our football team, but we know that we're going to have to make, make sure that we continuously do things right to give them something to cheer about. So if there's nothing to cheer about, then there won't be the energy that's there. I imagine that it's, uh, it's difficult for opposing offenses and their level of communication. I said they're going to have to change their, some of their procedures. Again, how are they going to handle it at the line of scrimmage, silent counts, things of that nature. Again, all the hand signals. Obviously, again, we, we certainly want to use that to our advantage, being able to get off the football and just lock in and key in. Well, we all know the 12s get loud at Century Link Field. You are a big part in why the Seahawks lead the NFL with eight straight home opener wins, and they look to continue that on Sunday. Kickoff is set for 125 Pacific. You can watch it live on Q13 Fox or listen to it on the Seahawks radio network. Now, if you're going to the game, make sure you are in the seats early as we have a special Thanks Paul celebration to start things off.